Hey guys, welcome back to Allison Customs Project Car TV. Um, back to messing with my uh, band saw, a little porta band or whatever. Um, it's the, uh, let me get that up there, it's the Bauer model that you get at Harbor Freight. And uh, it's worked really well for me for quite a while. Um, the problem, as you may recall from a video I did a while back, was the uh, variable speed switch had basically popped off and there's not like a set screw or something on it so in the end what I ended up doing was actually uh, after that video taking it apart again it worked for a little while and taking it apart again and wrapping a, a uh, zip tie around that switch and today what I'm gonna try and do I started I started looking for a replacement switch for it, it wasn't uh, something I was able to find but we're gonna try using this thing called the fan speed controller and uh, I got it off Amazon um, I think it was $17, $18, I don't remember exactly um, this is what it ends up actually looking like and what we're going to attempt to do anyway is wire this to be our variable speed switch instead of the switch in here and then we'll just mount this on the side of my little stand or something. Um, so that's the plan. That's what I'm hoping to try and achieve today. And uh, get get some tools out and see what we can do with this. I'm going to take this zip tie off the switch. And I think I mentioned last time, really don't even need this plastic handle. So part of this process may be just to entirely remove this and leave it off so we'll see as we get going here so we're gonna see my temporary fix here and that's gonna be on this switch you'll see a zip tie wrapped around it and actually it already fell off so wasn't doing much anyway. That's all I'd done was wrapped this zip tie around it and uh, it was seeming to hold it all in place but we're gonna try try something else this time. So we're unplugged take a picture of this with my phone so that if for some reason some of this doesn't end up working I can always at least put it back like it is but what I'm thinking is that we've got just three wires coming off the motor which is the green which will be the ground and then we have our uh, common and our our uh, lead, our hot wire, and uh, essentially those are going through this little board here as a speed control. But I'm thinking I can probably just cut them all here, remove all of this, and then just take those three wires and plumb them straight into this box and uh, then we may even be able to cleverly mount the box in the back of the back or the side of the of the bandsaw rather than even the side here but it doesn't really matter um, worst case we would just end up making a little cover plate back here to cover up where the wires are coming out which might actually be easier and then actually, so here I'm, I think we just solved the problem. Um, rather than having to break into this box, okay, so I'm thinking I could reroute these three wires that come straight off the motor straight into this box. And I can do that by, my thought was I would take this plug out and just hardwire all the way over to it. Looking at this now, I'm, it may be a little simpler than that even. I may be able to 
simply reroute the three wires coming out of my cord over to the motor just basically cut the white one cut the black one the green one's already straight to the motor hook them up to the motor in correct wire to wire orientation and then take this plug we could get rid of the whole handle we could just take this make us a little cover for the back of the of the uh, bandsaw motor here you can see this hole make a little cover for that with a grommet or something coming out for the this cable and then it could just plug straight into here that would simplify the whole thing um, and then that would allow us to run speeds here I think that's going to be our solution let's see what we can do with that So we've got the speed control and the trigger out of the way. Now let's see if we can go ahead and take the rest of this red arm off. So now you can see that hole a little better. So if we just make a cover plate there, these three wires come straight out as this cord basically this cord could come straight out so we'll go back to the idea we're just going to mount this speed control to the side of our of our plate the, the stand because I don't want a six foot cord hanging around let's see we would want We just came straight off the back of that. Okay, so quick down and dirty measurement is we're gonna take this much wire and cut the rest of this off. right there so we really don't want to have too much of this shoved down in there so we need to make us a plate real quick make, a ga make this cover and we start out making a pattern about like we'd make a gasket just get the shape of it pattern going. And I just went digging around over in my bin and got us a little piece of aluminum. Of course it's nice to be able to cut this out on this bandsaw but we'll so let's get this cut out and then we'll get back over. I don't know if you can really see the line there, but it shows up pretty well. So that's my scribe line to get me down to the finished size. Okay, so then the next thing is just to get our bolt hole centers.
we can mark those four. Okay, we're going to scribe the back one more time just to try and make the finish just or the fit just a little bit better. I'm going to use some Dicom this time instead of Sharpie. And we're going to use the original bolts that held the handle on. Pull this off, check our marks, and then what we'll do is once we've got it, that all done, we'll find the center or close to it and we'll come out the center with our, with our main cord. Here are my dogs going. The final plate, then I've got this uh, little wire connector or wire strain protector or whatever. Anyway, drilled a 5 8 inch hole for the center or real close to the center. We're going to tighten that up. And we can shove our cable through here. What you have is this little rubber boot that that fits inside there and that's kind of what that's what grips the wire and then these little teeth close down see those little teeth on there they close down over it with this nut so we're gonna get enough in there that we can connect everything <clears throat> I don't need too much But of course you got to put this piece on first. So. Basically I just need enough to hook up the ground cable because there's the other leads are long enough to do the rest. So. And that's that. So we'll Heat up a soldering gun and splice those wires together. And then this one we're going to put a, uh, the green one we're going to put a ring on it so we can put it on the ground spot that they were originally using. And I think we're going to be mostly done. factory screw that grounded it that's gonna sit right there Now my thinking is I'm going to mount this right here to the side panel and then have the cord off of our saw come up and feed into it. But we're going to test it first. Where we start opening up another can of worms. Alright, the switch is off. And right now I don't have a blade in here because I broke one yesterday and I haven't gone out and gotten another one. So let's see. We have 
two selections here, full speed. That's a good sign. And variable speed. And there we have it, it works. So this thing calls it a fan speed controller. On the side, it's called a router speed controller for brushless, or don't use on brushless type motors. Well, we know that one's brushes because it came with a spare set of them. So my thinking is I'm gonna take this clip off. I mean, you could probably just do something like that and it would hang there, but no. So I'm gonna drill these two rivets out, put a nut zert in there, drill a corresponding hole in here, and then bolt through from the inside out. So let's do that step. We need a small, probably an eighth inch drill bit for those two rivets. They're using this as a heat sink too, so that's this will actually work pretty well. So we're going to drill two holes. We're going to put one at the or two nut zerts in here, one at the top, one at the bottom. And I think that should still be plenty of room in here for the cord. Let me grab a couple of nut zerts real quick. Got to drill those out for number 10. I'm not really going to counter something. I'm just going to deburr them anyway. Work. Now I can plug some screws, make sure. go. Now we can take cord off of our saw, plug it in. We have a decently long piece for plugging into the wall. And then we can turn on the variable speed. full speed. Well guys, all I got to do now is get a couple blades for this and uh, put it back into use. So there's the solution for me for fixing that, uh, that bad variable rotary speed dial and uh, I'll save the parts, put them in with the handles and I don't know, maybe I'll find some use for it at some other point and may actually, you know, it, it looks like it's only a couple connections, so I may actually find another rotary switch at some point that I can replace this one with and, and have a spare for another project. So thanks for watching. We'll see you again on the next video. Thanks for watching Allison Customs Project Car TV. Like us on Facebook and check us out at allisoncustomsonline.com.